Hey, how's it going ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Zenworks channel. Today we're building the high grade Gundam Double O Advanced Gs. This time is the first time that I saw on premium and I actually got a new box art. Other than just add a standing pose of the Gampla, randomly draw some background and then put it in the whatever uh, plain color. This time they actually give you a new box art. I'm very impressed about that. And uh, let's quickly open it and we see there are four packages and but but sadly they didn't make you a new instruction book otherwise it would be perfect but uh it didn't so now let's take a look and see it uh we got a couple weapons and we got a lot of weapons reference as well and this is the head part and this is, that's a lot of difference so let's take a quick look so at the A side, we have a lot of parts that cross, B side as well. So A and B is the most part that be crossed. Right now, let's look at the runners. This is the A runner. We got beam sabers, legs part, and uh, shoulders, gen drives, the shield, pist uh, the rival, the side skirt, uh, some arms part, and the head part, and also we got uh, clear piece for the chest and we got hand options at the left corner We also got G1 runner. I believe this is the new part. Yeah uh, It's a new head the Rifle piece the shoulder piece and the new head Antenna at the bottom. This is the I2 runner Not really sure which part is it for but uh, I assume it's gonna be it's gonna be what was that called? It's, it's, I assume this is for the shoulders as well. This is a G two runner, so as you can see, new shoulder parts, and then we got uh, some feet part, and then some shoulder parts as well. This is the C runner. We see a beam rival. We see the inner joints, uh, the torso, a long rival. Uh, the backpack, the old backpack of the Jinx and we saw some legs joined here as well B runner uh, shield uh, the original Jinx backpack, the waist part, feet and the G and drive store spot the i3 runner, this is definitely for the new uh, prototype GN lens this is for the this is I1 runner for the GN lens. As you can see, it's white. It's playing white, so I'm not gonna expect too much. And this time, we got a full body cap and a a lot of stickers. So I assume the color separation is gonna be very bad since I saw this much stickers. Well, anyways, guys, I will see you at the review. Intersect on each one I reflect These lines write my story These places change me Each one replacing Like night into morning I miss the Guess I'm better off alone Never know when I'll get home 
Hey, 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 welcome back to the review of the Advanced Gene. So this is finishing off it. I honestly need to say though, uh, it's a little bit disappointing because if some of you built the Double O series before, uh, good designs, but they there's separation. The color separation is honestly terrible. A lot of parts on this gunpla actually can be done by color separation and like I mean parts of it, not by stickers. But uh, Bandai did a very good job on not letting it happen. Instead, they use some you know very loose stickers and then just stick on it. There you go. But uh, those there's enough. There's another problem. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I build the double series gunpla, it always have a huge gap between parts. I don't know why, but mo I don't know why most of the poly caps on the double series doesn't even fit in the parts. I don't even know why. Sometimes when I build it, I just feel very pissed off because it's it's a huge gap. Actually, it's a very huge gap, and I will talk about that later. But this is how it finished. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty good. Uh, the color theme, I like it. I absolutely like it. And this time, uh, not really much accessory to you know for you to mess around with it because the only free accessory that you're gonna got is a prototype GN lens, um, the beam rival, and a option hand of the open hand. That's it. Not really much accessory, but. Anyways, uh, it do got it did got some good ab uh, about the gunpla or some kind of bad about the gunpla, and I will talk about that. All right, let's not talk too much and jump into the review. All right, let's start with the head. The head is mostly new molded, and uh, it just only the step, the snap on side actually uses the old jinx mold, and there's a gray part on the on the head. There's a gray part uh, here great part is a sticker and of course the eye camera is a sticker mostly the head is new the head is capable of uh, slightly moving around because it's a non-movable poly, uh, non-movable poly cap so it's not really gonna move anywhere it barely can lift up and down and barely side to side the chest piece is a ball joint so you can slightly move each of the pieces here slightly and then as you and then if you can see it there's a there's the gn drive uh purple color engine here is covered by is covered and then we turn it to the back we see a huge it's not really huge but a very specific uh, gn drive uh, all the gray parts on this gn drive here and here all by stickers None of it is color separation, but I feel like this part of Gene Drive can be reworked because you can just put a gray piece in there, snap it on, and there you go. It's really that easy, but I don't know why Bandai didn't think about that back in the time. Right, now let's talk about the hand. So first, optional hand for you to choose. This is for the left hand only and open hand. So the whole hand is capable of 360 movements, uh, front, back as well. Uh, the whole arm is not support for uh, rotation, but this time you only can bend 90 degrees because this is an old mold. It actually can turn though, but it's a bit hard to do it. You, as you can see, it's turnable. Ooh, it's turnable, and the head and the armor piece on the hand is extremely easy to bail out. Oh my! I don't know about you guys, but my Jinx got this problem because. The handpiece armor here is seriously very easy to snap out and this is the part where i said there is a problem about double o's as you can see all the double o's series that i ever built is having this kind of gap problem like i don't know is the poly gaps too big or the designing problem but all the double o's that i ever built is always got a huge gap either on the legs you see it fall out again either on the legs or either on the arms and I need to say though, seriously, this armor piece is so unstable. I wish I could have glued that, but I need to hold on to the lens later. And this time, Advanced Jeans, they give you a side. If Does it remind you of something? The Striker Jinx that I built before uh, is basically the same. And all the white color on the wings here is by stickers. And just give you a hint, it is very soft. 
I mean joint. It is very soft and it is very easy to move. It's capable of moving 360, of course. And it always gives me a feeling of if I touch it, it's gonna fall out. And let me easy, let me show you how easy to pull out. That's it. How easy to pull out. So I'm afraid if you if you put the gauntlet for a very long time and it's gonna eventually just fall out by itself. So I suggest you, if you don't like to move it, just glue it. All right, moving on to the uh, tor to the waist part. So the waist part here actually uh, you can turn about night a little bit over ninety because during to the fact there's a huge whoop, there's a huge there's a huge waist piece here to block it. The waist piece here, each individual waist piece is movable as you can see, and we turn to the back. We got a lot of new parts here. We can see a huge thruster in there. And this time we're gonna turn, this time the legs is ball joint, the old doubles series ball joint. So it's not gonna do really well. Barely can kick to the side. Uh, kick, can't really kick to the front during the large waist piece. And barely can kick to the back because of the back waist. Actually the legs movement is very bad though, actually. Uh, the whole leg is capable of bending 90 degrees. And uh, th there's a there's a back piece armor on the legs that you can move it. The the feet here you can move it whatever you want 360. And there's a small piece of armor here at the bottom of the leg, and it's still movable as well. So overall, I would say the legs movement is absolutely ridiculous and it's bad. And the arms is slightly acceptable for the whole gampla. For me, this gampla movement is absolutely not acceptable. I don't know why you put premium bandai's with old molds. This is why you use, this is why you need to design with new molds on the premium bandai. You sell it that expensive and yet you give me that kind of crap articulation. <laughs> now moving on to the, uh, not the articulation, sorry, the accessories. So the accessory that we got, prototype, uh, GN lens. This is honestly the only part that I can compliment about this gamble. It, it did a very good job on the color separation. Even at the tip here is by parts. No stickers being used on this uh, prototype lens. I need to I need to compliment for a second because the only thing that is awesome on this gamble is the is the lens. That's it. The whole the gamble itself, all the gray parts of the joint is by stickers. Even on the handpiece armor, everywhere that have a small gray part, I mean small gray color, is actually by stickers. And I'm just pissed off, okay? And now the only good color separation, seriously, is this lens. And as you can see, the lens, it's not really, it's not really anything new or anything different because you've probably seen it on the Jinx 3, but actually it's got a slightly different looking is of course the color change and of course it does get a better color separation i remember the old jinx free model it actually gives you a pretty crap color separation if i did if i remember correctly sorry i don't really remember and the next thing is we got a rival the rival with two heads so you can either put it back this is a, it actually is pretty simple so you pull down you you can move it move the handle and then you can just plug this on. This is the, this is the old, this is the original Jinx rifle. So this is a long rifle. You can hold it on the hand, and as you can see, the camera is purple and it's by a sticker. Or you can put this on with a, with the beam sabers down below. Does it remind you of something? Yes, the striker Jinx. Yes, it is. It's getting the idea from the uh, advanced Jinx, and you can put the. Beam saber effect part on here. There you go. And also, we got an extra beam saber for you to hold on it. And it does give you something though. This or the shield of the Jinx. As you can see, the middle part is completely stickers. I wish it was a part separation, but it's not. It does have a peg here for you to put on the hands. But uh, honestly, though, if you put on the shield, it's gonna uh, influence the wings movement. So depends on you but the wings <laughs> no matter you you spin it or you touch it is either gonna fall down in some time so not really recommended for you to put on the shield but the kit still got you this one so if you want to put a shield on it welcome anyway guys this is the end of the review uh, I just did a little test though the 
uh, the handpiece is actually very unstable. You are impossible. I'm just saying it. This is literally impossible to, for you to hold the lens two hands because the handpiece, the handpiece here, the hand armor piece here is very weak. If you slightly pop it, it's gonna fall out. There's no way you can hold that lens. I'm just telling you that fact. If you really want to hold it, I suggest you though, if you do that pose, just glue it. If you really want to do it, glue the hands on the lens. And then there you go, you can pose because that is impossible to do it. My, I, I tried to do the pose and it's literally impossible to do it. Uh, I feel like Bandai should actually test their premium Bandai product before they even release it because now I can't hold the lens two hands. It, it's literally impossible during the durability on the handpiece hour is weak is weak is trash is rubbish for the cap for the durability if you like if you just slightly touch it it's gonna fall down I I glue it right now because I can't take this anymore I, I literally glue it and there you go I only can hold the lens for one hand I don't know is it my model problem though but because can anyone tell me if you if you own a XG Jinx, can you please comment down below? Tell me, do you have the same problem on your hands? Because I got mine. But anyway, uh, that's enough complaint. I'm just saying though, uh, this pre this P Bandai is a very cool design, very good, uh, very good looking. But the articulation and the st and it's but the articulation is rubbish, and the and the durability on the hands is rubbish. And I can literally tell you though, I tried to hold the beam rival, the beam long beam rival on the hand, and the and the joint is not it's not strong enough to hold it, and it always keeps dropping down, and it's very annoying. I actually need to talk to Bandai though. You should test your product before you release it because this is this is just awful. Okay, this is just awful. Anyways, I'm done complaining because I feel like. This is more complaining than reviews, but anyway. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like on my videos and subscribe to my channel as well. And I'll see you next time in another review. I need a break right now. Goodbye.